Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first Med Mentor Monday of the fall quarter. If you're new to our organization, welcome. We are a group of medical students at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, pictured behind me. I might have seen it. It's across the street from Ralph's if you're a UCLA student. Um, but our goal is to provide free resources and advice to all pre-med students, whether you're at UCLA or another institution. Um, today's session will be a little bit more focused on UCLA um, as we have a representative from the UCLA Career Center here to give you some specific resources at the end of the session. Um, but let's get started. Um, a few ground rules are that we um, ask that you pose all questions to the Q&A and not the chat. Chat can kind of get messy sometimes and we wanna make sure we cover um, everyone's questions. And then I posted an agenda in the chat so you can follow along. Um, but first up, we will just start off with some introductions. So I'm gonna have all of our panelists who are current medical students at UCLA um, introduce themselves. Just say your name, where you're from, um, perhaps your undergrad and what year you are at DGSOM. And then um, also Christina will have you introduce yourself too. So um, let's start with Candice. Hi, I'm Candice. I'm an MS1, so I'm a first year med student here at DGSOM. Um, I'm from the Bay Area. I went to Berkeley, so go Bears and now go Bruins. All right, body. Hi everyone, my name is Fadi, I'm MS1. Um, I went to UCLA actually for undergrad. So I might be in the same boat uh, with a lot of you. Uh, I'm from the Valley, just 30, what, 20, 30 miles away from DGS, so I'm happy to help you out. Okay, Nicholas. All right, hi everyone, my name is Nick. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I went to the Ohio State University and now I'm here, and I'm a first year. Hey, Nam, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Nam. Um, I immigrated from Korea when I was 10. I grew up from Irvine, California, went to UCLA for undergrad. So nice to meet you guys. I'm a first year medical student now. And Christina? Hi everybody, my name is Christina. I am from the UCLA Career Center. I'm a career counselor responsible for pre-med pre-health uh, advising, pre-med pre-health programming. So you can come to us for a lot of resources that, that we're gonna talk about later. And my name is Julia, I'm from Kentucky. Um, I just finished my second year of med school and now I'm starting the PhD in the MD-PhD program here. Um, and yeah, I went to Emory for college and went straight through. So let's get going. Um, today's session is all about um, obviously being a pre-med, but most importantly, how to get oriented, how to get um, started on this big pre-med journey to medical school. And there's a lot of different ways to get to medical school and there's no right way to get to medical school. Um, so don't compare yourself to others. Um, you'll each have your own unique journey. And as you'll hear today, there are many, many different ways um, that we all got here. Um, I do want to share a little diagram I drew literally 15 minutes ago um, that I hope will provide some clarity when you're starting to approach your pre-med journey. So let me share my screen. All right, so if you can see this, um, these are a few potential pre-med paths with major landmarks that I would consider on your pre-med journey. And this is just good to get a big picture idea um, from the get-go, whether you're a freshman on the pre-med track, whether you're a transfer student starting on the pre-med track at a new place, um, whether you're a senior saying, hey, um, I decided I wanna do medicine now. Um, each journey will look a little different, but it will all include a couple of things. So um, as you guys know, all throughout your journey, you'll be taking classes, you'll be doing volunteer work, you'll be serving your community, um, getting some clinical experience, maybe with shadowing or clinical volunteering, um, and also doing fun things, okay? So pre-med should not be miserable all the time. Um, you should also have a life and take care of your mental health as well. Um, and so I guess it's easiest to look at this almost in a backwards way. Um, so your goal is to start medical school, right? 
Um, and that typically happens in the summer or the fall, um, depending on the program. So basically the fall or spring, fall to spring before you start medical school, um, you'll be interviewing for medical school. And then before that, in the summer before you start medical school, a year, a year before, um, maybe it would have been easier to go forward, but we'll try this. Um, you actually apply to medical school. And then um, before that, you have to ask for letters of rec. And before that, you have to take the MCAT. So it's almost like you have to kind of think, okay, here are all the things I need to achieve. And then you map out when you can achieve them. So let's try to do it. Um, for someone who wants to go straight after college, a lot of times these people are called, they go straight through. So that means, you know, if you graduated, um, you know, in spring 2022, then you would start medical school in fall 2022. And so for people who want to go straight through, you got to start pretty early. You got to take your MCAT um, sometime either during your junior year of college or a little bit after, like the summer you apply to medical school. Um, you also got to start asking for letters of recommendation in like your junior year of college, your third year of college. Um, and then you actually apply to medical school after your junior year in the summer. So basically like a year and a half, this application process starts. And then during your senior year, if you're going straight through, that's when you're going to be interviewing, um, traveling to schools or doing Zoom interviews in this year's case and getting those acceptances. And then the summer, basically the summer or fall after you graduate college, you'll start med school. And, you know, for people with, who want to take gap years, which are many of the panelists here, um, it's the same set of things but you're, you have a little bit more flexibility of when you want to start thinking about doing those. So um, essentially, you're going to be starting the application process a whole year before you even start medical school. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. And um, it's not meant to stress you out, but um, you can screenshot this or reference it later, or maybe even find an easier diagram <laughs> that explains it better. Um, but I just wanted to give everyone kind of a big picture of uh, what your path could look like. And happy to answer questions at the end of this session. All right, so let's to finish with that and get to the panelists because they have some great things to share with you all. Um, the first topic for today, um, I just wanna ask the panelists like to think back to their start of their pre-med journey and what advice would you give to pre-meds who are just starting out? Anyone can start. Uh, all right, uh, I'll let Fadi start actually. Thank you, Nick. Um, so I'm one of those who took two gap years. So this, this goes out to everyone who decided on like taking a break after graduating and then figuring their life out, I guess, work and then apply to medical school. So I think this will apply to you. Uh, originally, I wanted to do one gap year bef between like undergrad and medical school, but then that didn't work out for like some personal reasons. I was so disappointed and I was like, man, two gap years, it's gonna be a lot of time spent out of school and then I'm gonna get old and all that. But to be honest, taking two gap years was the best decision I've ever made in my life. Um, most, I think the bulk of my application as far as like experience um, and then like life-changing events happened in my gap years. It's where I got to do like a lot of research. I was working actually for UCLA, I was a TA for biochem at some point. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I TA'd one of you actually. So, uh, so that I did a lot of hours there and then I ended up talking about all these experiences during my interviews. So it was very, it was very helpful. And I think I got some time off from school to like have some fun and all that. Um, so I really recommend taking gap year, but if you're like Nick and you wanna go to medical school straight out of college, you can do that too. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I guess I'll go next. Uh, yeah, like uh, Fadi said, I went uh, straight from undergrad uh, to medical school. And even though that was the best decision for me, I'd like to point out that the majority of the first years at DGSOM took gap years. Like it's probably, I don't know, 20 or 30 percent of us went straight in, but the rest took one, two or more gap years. Um, so it's pretty common to take a gap year. So I know especially coming from uh a family of color. Um, sometimes a lot of people think, oh, you got to go straight in, but that's really not the case. Um, that being said, I did. Um, so my kind of general tips and advice, uh, first years, uh, just 
really focus on getting your study habits down because that's what's important and kind of get involved, but you don't need a leadership position. Second year, maybe try to get a leadership position if you can, but if not, if you can get more involved in whether it's uh, clinical opportunities, clubs, get some type of leadership if you can, as well as clinical experience is important. Your third years, um, decide if you want to go straight in or not, because your third years will, where you would want to start studying and get ready for the MCAT if you're going right in, which can be a lot for a lot of people because you're juggling um, classes, you're juggling studying for this test, which might be three to five hours a day for some people. In addition, you might be doing some sort of like research or clinical thing. So it's a lot. So it's that's why it's uh, some people recommend taking a gap year. Um, because it can be a lot on your plate. And then um, if you're going right in your fourth year, it's a lot of interviewing, getting some of that stuff done. So those are kind of my tips. All right, I'll go next. Um, I'm one of the very non-traditional students, I would say. Um, I was actually a chemical engineering major for two and a half years of my college. I wasn't interested in medicine at all. And then I decided to join the army. So I served in the U.S. Army for four years and then came back to UCLA. And when I came back, that's when I decided that I wanted to go into medicine. And when I was taking all these pre-med courses, I studied along with the MCAT like study books. So if anyone's actually studying for MCAT and taking the classes at the same time, I highly recommend going through the same section. For example, if you're taking life science courses, going through bio, like covering those MCAT court, uh, concepts as well. I, I, that really helped me um, to understand those concepts better and get prepared for the MCAT, meanwhile studying for the classes as well. So for those of you who are start, starting just now or taking those classes that's still relevant to the MCAT, I recommend studying those MCAT materials along with the classes. Um, other than that, UCLA has a lot of research opportunities open to your doors. Just um, don't be afraid of rejections and start emailing um, PIs who has projects that are interesting to you. Um, that's it uh, for now. Hi again, so I'm Candice. Um, if I were to go back to my freshman year and I told myself something, I would have said, calm down. <laughs> you'll be just fine. Um, I ended up going straight through and I'm in the MD PhD program along with Julia. But I think along the way, I kept stressing myself out. I got caught up in this rat race of like, is this what I wanna do? If this is what I wanna do, there's so many things I have to do. There's so many things I have to get like get in place and I have to do this perfectly and do that perfectly. And I was just this pinnacle of like anxiety in a small ball. And honestly, for if you want to be in medicine, you will end up in medicine. It doesn't matter if you take a short journey or a long journey, you will find your way back here if this is what it's meant to be. So just take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. I totally agree. I think um, my advice to anyone starting the pre-med journey, no matter where you're at, is like many of us have said, um, kind of take a deep breath um, and, you know, ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, you know, ask your teachers, ask older students who have applied to medical school, go to sessions like these and talk to us. Um, yeah, just don't be afraid to ask any question. No question is um, silly. Uh, it's a really long journey and there's a lot of steps along the way. But I think my advice is you don't have to know what you're doing at each step from the beginning. Like just take it one step at a time. Um, you know, for first years starting out or anyone new on the journey, I think my, my best advice is to focus on your classes first. Um, get comfortable in those classes, do your best in those classes. And then, you know, maybe in a quarter or two, once you're comfortable with classes, then you can start to add on extracurriculars, service opportunities, things like that. Don't feel like you have to start and sign up for everything from the get-go. Um, you can phase in those opportunities and build your resume 
gradually over time and um, you do have time. Um, and we are here for you. Um, and we have videos on every, every aspect of this journey and we'll continue to have events like these. So um, don't feel like this is your only opportunity to ask questions. We'll have an hour to talk about MCAT, an hour to talk about letters of rec, an hour to talk about each part of the application phase. So for today, just take a deep breath and, um, and focus on um, kind of getting excited to start your journey. Um, all right, so one thing that is super important that many of the panelists have mentioned is um, just like taking advantage of your resources. Um, and so that's kind of what we wanna talk about in this next bit. Um, basically just who did you look for for help at the beginning of your pre-med journey? Um, and like what type of mentors did you find helpful? Um, or if you didn't have any mentors, what, what mentors did you wish you had? Um, those kind of things. I'm gonna start off, ooh, go for it, Nick, go for it. <laughs> oh no, okay, I was gonna start off by saying, uh, the mentor doesn't have to be in medicine also. Like a lot of times a good coach is a good coach. They will take you through the steps needed to get you to the goal you wanna to get to. So it does, also, this person doesn't always have to be in medicine. That being said, I think the best thing about the mentors that I had, the most important, well, First, I found them through things that I was interested in. And because our interest in the line, it made that mentorship and that relationship so much deeper because we could do research. I could talk about these things in my free time. And it was just a way to develop an un, like a, a much deeper relationship with someone who may be writing a letter of recommendation for you. Um, but I wouldn't look at it like that. <laughs> um, and then the other part is just that like good mentors, I've found will take an interest, not in just like what you can produce, but you're also your process. So if they're just interested in using you as like grunt work in, in the lab, just to like process samples, then that's not gonna be a good mentor to you necessarily because they're not looking out for your personal growth and your growth as you know a person on the path to become a physician. If they take an interest in guiding you and giving you advice and giving you projects and making sure that you are valued as a person, that's actually gonna go so much farther than any other mentor. Yeah, I'd just echo what Ken said where your mentor doesn't always have to be in medicine. One of my biggest uh, mentors was my, my academic advisor. At Ohio State, uh, I was in a relatively small major so our academic advisors knew us personally. So they would know kind of things I was interested, upperclassmen who were interested in the same things and would connect me that way. And in terms of looking for other mentors, I'd honestly recommend upperclassmen in certain clubs or programs you're in. My first year, I befriended a couple third years, some of which applied uh, straight in from undergrad, some that took gap year. So I was able to ask them a lot of questions, even though they were just two years ahead of me, they knew so much more about the process and I learned a lot from them. So I would say kind of through organizations and potentially if you're close to your academic advisor or you think there's potential to, um, I'd recommend that. Um, so one thing I want to mention about this portion of the session is um, I couldn't find the mentor until I was like towards the end of my undergrad years. And I thought the, I think the reason was um, I didn't really look into the opportunities that I had. Um, but looking through the research opportunities that UCLA offers and really reading through them and trying to figure out what interested me, I was able to formulate like, these emails. Um, they were able to um, and get, get, get me a connection to these PIs. And for those of you who are trying to get research opportunities or find the mentors, um, I would definitely encourage you guys to really study what they've um, done in the past and think about if their work really aligns with your interests before trying to find the mentors. But um, echoing what Candace and Nick said, 
um, when your interest uh, aligns with their interests as well, I think that really delves into where you can build a deeper relationship with the mentors and learn more from them and their environments. For me, my mentor, I think, was my dad. Although my dad is not a physician or an academic advisor or anything like that. But just to add to what my classmates said, sometimes a mentor can be someone who motivates you into doing what you're doing. So what, like, through the tough, like, moments on this journey, like the MCAT, the stress of application, the stress of, like, interview season and, like, waiting for acceptances. Um, sometimes you just look at my dad's, like, story. He went through some hardships when he was little. And then uh, I was just thinking about those as a way to, like, uh, motivate me and, like, keep me sane during the project, right? So, sorry, the process. So, if you looking, I guess, for a mentor, sometimes look for someone who gives you motivation, whether it's spiritually or whether it's, like, if through talking to you, that's very important, too, that you stay motivated through the process because there's going to be a lot of hurdles and, like, a lot of, like, tough moments and fences you're going to climb, but eventually you'll get there with the right mindset. Great. I echo every, what everybody said. Um, finding mentors can be difficult at times, but um, again, don't be afraid to reach out and um, ask for help. And I guess this will be a good time for us to mention, um, since many of you are new to UCLA or new to hearing about med mentors, um, we have a lot of different services that we offer to help you guys. Um, we have panels like these um, almost every week on different topics. Um, and you can watch our old sessions um, by following us on Instagram at MedMentorsUCLA or on Facebook. We're transitioning this quarter to YouTube. So we'll be posting this video on YouTube, um, but you can watch topics, videos on all kinds of topics and it's all med students at UCLA. Um, we also have one-on-one -on -one um, peer advising sessions that you can sign up to just have a one-on-one -on -one session with a med student. And um, we have coffee chats that are kind of a similar thing where you can just talk with one of us one-on-one -on -one and get all your questions answered if they weren't able to be answered in a big session like this. Um, we have essay editing sessions. We have application, um, like workshops and brainstorming sessions, MCAT advice, um, all those things. And we can send you an email after and put the info. Um, on our YouTube channel, but um, that's what we're here to do. We recognize that this is overwhelming and it's a lot of information to be uh, thrown at you from the beginning, um, but just know that you can definitely do it and we're here to help. Um, so on that note, I just want to let uh, tran transition over to the Career Center section of this uh, talk and have Christina share um, some upcoming events and resources that the UCLA Career Center offers. And then if you hang around, we'll have an open Q&A shortly after that. Um, so I'll share the screen, Christina, and then you can take it over. Thank you. So uh, we put together this document. So to make it a little bit easier of, uh, to remember all the things that either we do at the Career Center or the events that we are planning for fall quarter. So this is the resources guide. We do have a pre-health at UCLA website. You can see it, um, you can see the link there. We have a pre-health at UCLA Facebook page um, that we post events, uh, reminders of med mentor events, our events, and sometimes student organizations, pre-med, pre-health student organizations are sharing their events and we promote them um, on the Facebook page. We share articles, we have a student org spotlight series, uh, pre-med, uh, pre-health alumni spotlight series. So we try to keep it um interesting and you can follow us and if you get bored you can drop us um it's okay we're not gonna get offended uh we do have virtual counseling sessions um you can make one-on-one -on -one appointments but we also introduced free hot drop-ins on fridays at 12 because uh we are a little bit of a uh, well, we are busy usually in the fall quarter at the beginning, especially in October, and we want to be reachable. So if you cannot find an appointment, which are posted mostly on Fridays, 
please feel free to check in with us uh, during the pre-hall drop-ins on Fridays. The scheduled appointments are 30 minutes long. Uh, the drop-in sessions are 15 minutes long, uh, but we'll try to address any questions you may have, and I know you have them. So pre-hall newsletter, you can, they come out bi-weekly every um, other week, so second, fourth, sixth, and eighth. Um, if you uh, pick healthcare as your industry in, uh, interest on your handshake profile, that's how you sign up for the pre health newsletter. Please don't just sign up, open it too, because our opening rate for some reason is fairly low. And we do have a lot of great um, even job opportunities that we scan uh, handshake for. Uh, Pre-health, pre-med job opportunities in that newsletter. And we share out of... Um, off-campus opportunities that we receive from other institutions, from, for example, research opportunities at other institutions. So it's definitely worth signing up for it. Um, and then we have workshops and webinars, and that's the next portion of this handout. Um, the fall quarter is going to be quite busy. And uh, the pre-health orientation today kicked off um, the, a series of a series of webinars. Everything is going to stay on Zoom for the fall quarter. So in the second week, we have the pre-med now what series, and we go over the pre-med resources that it's not just the med mentors, although Julia will be there again, uh, but we're going to try to share a lot of other things that are available on campus to you um, in, to support you through the pre-med journey. And then we're gonna do the fighting, uh, we're gonna try to help you find clinical experience and research experience on October 7th. And we do have MCAT strategy sessions in collaboration with Princeton every quarter. And we do offer the same online free practice test every quarter. So if you want to take a diagnostic test just to see how you would do it with, um, on an MCAT without much preparation, I highly recommend to take advantage of this. GRE strategy sessions, and we started the hidden gems in healthcare just because sometimes students do decide that they no longer want to be pre-med. I'm not trying to take you off this path at all, but some of you may decide down the line that it's um, that this is something you no longer want to pursue. And um, oftentimes um, after being pre-med for a while, it's hard to figure out what might be next. So we do have two series to help you with that, the Jumpstart series, um, and there are recordings for us too on the uh, YouTube, on the Career Center's YouTube channel, and you can still see the link um, a little bit. And uh, feel free to watch those, but I decided to run the Hidden Gems um, as well as a series, and the Environmental Health Advocate will be the next. Uh, topic on in this series and feel free to reach out to us if Julia can send this uh, PDF to all of you feel free to use it and thank you so much for listening to me and I'm looking forward meeting some of you hopefully soon thank you so much Christina um, the Career Center has been a wonderful um, partner with Med Mentors since we started, um, not long before the pandemic. So we're pretty new um, to UCLA as well. And so, um, yeah, we're just we're just here to serve you guys. Um, okay, so been getting a lot of questions, and some of you submitted questions um, on the RSVP form. So I want to start out with one that's been very popular. Um, the first question is, if you guys could just give a rundown on some things you were involved in um, on your pre-med journey, whether that's volunteer opportunities, clinic opportunities, research, whatever, just so people can get an idea of the different types of activities they could be involved in before medical school. So I guess I'll start like, uh, so I'll start with like research. I started researching after my sophomore year. So don't worry about getting involved like super quickly. I started uh, the summer of my sophomore year and kept going. I researched in sickle cell. Um, it was not like a wet lab pipetting, looking for a, the function of a specific protein. That's not me. It was mostly desk and a little uh, in the clinic. So I did that. I also volunteered at a local hospital, um, the university hospital. 
Um, I was in an organization called MedLife and that worked on like a mobile medical brigades internationally. So I went on a mobile medical brigade my freshman year. And then my uh, sophomore and junior year, I was responsible for organizing some of those trips. Um, and I was also in a random acts of kindness club. Um, I was in a poetry club. Uh, so you can do non-medical things. So I was like the recruitment chair for the poetry club for a year. Um, and I also worked at the uh, COVID testing center when uh, COVID started. And just before that, uh, during the PPE shortage, I worked with a company called Patel that sanitized used N95 masks. So for just over two months, I was in Long Island, New York doing that. So those are some of my involvements. I can go next. Um, I actually started research my freshman year. Um, it wasn't necessarily the most glamorous research, but I you know, kept asking professors, like basically everyone that came to like give a talk in this lecture series. I asked them like, can I do something for you? Can I do something for your lab? Um, and eventually they were like, here, just pipette this thing. And that was the beginning of very long research <laughs> that I ended up doing. Um, I moved around to different labs, but ended up staying in my last lab for three years doing infectious disease research. That took up a lot, if not most of my time. I also volunteered at a free clinic and I scribe slash intern at a gastrointestinal, a GI docs um, clinic. And then I was also on my pre-med clubs, um, like exec board. So I was like um, assistant secretary one year and then I like moved up to like vice president, et cetera. So yeah, that was me. Hi, hi, I'll go next. Um, the first year, like I said, I was um, not a pre-med. So I started doing business club. I was like a public relations manager there. And um, also I was involved in app development. It was about uh, smoking cessation for youth in LA County. And second and third year, I did, I was getting interested in some kind of medical um, field due to uh, from my church, people I met from my church. So I did a mission trip to Honduras and a mission trip to Guatemala in second or third year, respectively. And they were medical related ones. Um, after my third year, I joined the US Army as a combat medic, um, served as a paratrooper. I was deployed to Afghanistan and then came back and I was involved in clinical outcomes research at UCLA. Um, and that's pretty much it. Sure, I can go next. Um, so for me, I was really worried about research because I only did a month and a half summer research program, I think my sophomore year, before I transferred to uh, UCLA. And then at UCLA, I couldn't find a lab in, during my uh, junior year. So I was very worried. And then in my senior year, I found two labs. And I was like, OK, which one should I join? So I ended up just joining both of them. <laughs> and then that took a lot of my time. And I kept doing that during my first and second gap year, which, is, which brings me again to my point earlier. I'm very happy I took those two years because I ended up doing more work in these two labs which um, like resulted in like uh, publications and stuff. So that's what I'm saying. Like sometimes an opportunity might show up late in your life, but even though you can still make a lot um, of it, right? And I think another major thing um, in my application was that I was involved in teaching related um, extracurriculars. So like I mentioned, I was a TA for biochem in my gap years. Again, this was amazing, but during undergrad, I was part of like, for example, the LA Learning Assistant Program. So for, for you guys at UCLA, um, it's like this, um, you're someone who helps TAs in doing discussions uh, for science subjects. It could be physics, biochem, all that stuff. So I really recommend doing that. It's very, very helpful. I did it for like, um, for like a year. Uh, I did also other like tutoring and all that stuff. As far as um, clinicals, I shadowed 
um, a surgeon and I shadowed the hospitalist at Reagan uh, back before COVID. I also volunteered with the care extenders. Probably have heard of that if you are at UCLA. Um, and then I think, I think that was about it. Uh, the rest of my uh, application was obviously for like serving in underserved communities. Um, I was helping people, let's say like um, create resumes and find job. Uh, so for like economic stability, right? So that was also a big part of my, um, my application. So my advice to you is find something you're passionate about and go and search for things that might make your experience unique in that field. And you can capitalize on that uh, in your application cycle. So for me, it ended up being research and teaching for most of it, right? Um, so yeah, a lot, of, a lot of this will, again, require you searching. These opportunities will not come to you. So you will have to actually go and search. It might be tedious, but trust me, the more you search, um, put yourself out there, something will, will catch your, what do you call it, uh, the fishnet or something, right? So just keep looking. And now during COVID might be a little bit tough, but trust me, there is some stuff you could still do. And if not, start your own organization and your own community for helping out uh, during these tough times. This will look amazing if you do that. So think of creative stuff to do. As you can see, our panelists have been involved with so many different and amazing things. Um, again, a reminder, don't compare yourself to others. Um, I think broadly, or just to think about it, you can think about it this way. Um, first of all, think about things that are required for medical school versus things that are not. So research is not required to get into medical school unless you want to do a dual degree research program like an MD PhD program. And we have a panel that talks all about that. Um, clinical experience is typically encouraged, um, but for me, I only shadowed um, maybe three doctors over my college career and each shadowing experience was like two to three hours. It wasn't a lot. Some medical schools have specific shadowing requirements. Um, so make sure you look at those. But um, it's really hard to come by those opportunities, um, especially now. So don't put too much pressure on yourself um, to get those um, unless it's explicitly required in the application. Um, I think the goal of all these clinical volunteer experiences, whether that's volunteering at a hospital or um, reading books to kids at the children's hospital, it can be anything kind of adjacent to clinic. Um, you don't have to be an EMT or um, actually be uh, treating patients in any way. Um, it's just, are you comfortable being around a patient population? Do you kind of know what a doctor does enough to say you want to be one? That's kind of the goal of the clinical experience part. And then service is big. And one of the questions we've gotten is, does all of your extracurriculars have to be related to medicine? And the answer is no. Um, as you heard, um, we were all involved in different things. I was a tour guide. Um, I played sports in college. So um, do things that you like and do things you enjoy um, because each of those opportunities will teach you valuable skills that you need to be a good medical student and a good doctor. Um, whether that's leadership or teamwork or communication, you can find that in a lot of different organizations that are not pre-med organizations. Um, so don't feel like you have to sign up for everything pre-med related. Um, it's actually nice if you have a unique interest or path because then um, it makes you more interesting and um, it's more fun to talk about during your interviews too. Um, and then the other main thing is pre-med class requirements. And so that's something you got to talk to Christina about. You got to talk to the folks at the Career Center about. Um, they will tell you what you need. Um, and those are pretty strict requirements. Like you got to get your classes. You got to take organic chemistry. You know, you got to take your bio classes. Um, sorry, but it will prepare you well. And you got to take the MCAT. So um, just keep things in perspective. And remember, you don't have to start now. Um, you have time. And especially if you're just starting college, my biggest advice is to just take it easy and focus on your classes, getting acclimated to college life, making friends, um, making sure you're eating. And so um, you, you'll have time to fill in all those points on your resume for sure. Okay, I got a cool question. Um, it was, what made you guys want to be pre-med um, in the first place? And I think if we could just... Uh, 
kind of quickly go around and say um, a little bit about that. It'll be fun to hear. I can start. So I put kind of already answered this in the chat, but I always really enjoyed biology. I liked figuring out how things worked and I thought it was really cool that all of this just happened and we were just out here and like taking advantage of all these incredible things that our bodies can do for us without even realizing. Um, and so I thought I would be pre-med and then I tried a bunch of other things and I always came back to medicine and that's how I knew that I kept wanted to keep being a pre-med because it sparked so much joy in me to use Marie Kondo's words. Well, I can go next. Um, so I realized that when I was working as a combat medic in the army, um, there were moments that um, I could have done more or there was only limited amount of service that I could provide to my buddies or the battlefield uh, patients. And those moments where I was like, um, I want to do, I want to study more so that I can provide more for the patients and the community. And that's what inspired me that into the medicine in the first place. This might be um, uh, very different from what other people in this um, session might go through or have to go through, but it's just, um, I guess it's, it brings us back to do whatever interests you and be exposed to the medical field and the, those opportunities might come to you or those inspirations. So always uh, stay interested and be curious about um, about medicine and I guess the inspiration will come to you. I would say for some people, I know there was like a specific moment where they're like, this is it, I wanna, like, I wanna be a doctor. But like, I was one of those people where that wasn't the case. It was just kind of like continued interest where uh, I had four surgeries in high school, all sports related. And even though obviously you hate being hurt, um, being exposed to the medical uh, field as a patient is what kind of initially got me interested. I remember taking anatomy and physio in high school, then in college, loved them. But I also knew there was a lot I didn't know. Like I didn't know what a pharmacist did. I didn't know what a, a nurse practitioner did, stuff like that. So there was definitely an exploring phase where I said I was pre-med, but I also knew I didn't know what else was in the healthcare field. So it's okay to be pre-med and talk to a nurse practitioner. It's okay to be pre-med and talk to like a physical therapist and just kind of like figure out what you like because you don't wanna go like through the MCAT and apply when you really would hate to be a doctor. Um, so I would say it's really important to explore other things to make sure this is what you wanna do because it's a big commitment. It's not for everyone. And I know people who were pre-med who were quote smart enough to go through the process but ended up being happier as a nurse practitioner. So I would say like you definitely wanna explore other things to affirm that this is what you want to do. Um, so I would just say that. Oh, and also um, great mentorship um, through uh, physicians was something else that made me like, be like, yes, I want to be a doctor. For me, I would guess the process was a little bit boring. So I was born into a Middle Eastern family. And if you're Middle Eastern, you can only be one of three things. Uh, your parents will push you to be either a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. So, and you just pick one. Uh, so my family pushed me towards uh, the medical field, but luckily I grew up liking science and bio and physics and math and, and all that stuff. So it worked out well for me. But I guess the moment that helped me solidify that um, desire, I guess, was when I shadowed um, um, a hospitalist uh, at Reagan. And I, when I rounded with him and I saw how like they go through cases, right? So he's out there with all these residents and this patient like comes in and they go through their history, like the medical stuff related. And it's like a big problem, right? So they all solve it together. And like, that's what I really like the team, um, the team like um, structure um, and then the thinking process, right? So that's what I liked. Um, so I encourage every single one of you to actually go up online after let's say our session, look up pros and cons of being a physician. See what people out there are saying. Like, um, you might see, like, oh, a physician says, I'm in the hospital 
12 hours a day, I don't see the sunlight, I hate it, this and that, and then you ended up like not liking that too. So, or you might see something like a pro, like, oh, I, I get to meet a lot of people, connect with them on deep level, I love it, it's the best thing in life. You might like that too. So go and look up um, pros and cons and see if being a physician fits you. That's very important. You're gonna yeah, like, diff, like you're gonna sit there in medical school for four years, you're gonna go through residency, fellowship training and all that. It's about like 10 years of your life. So you wanna make sure you chose the right thing. Um, so be comfortable with it, look at the pros and cons and not just follow what your family pushes you into, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my advice to you. Awesome. Those are great answers. Um, another question I really like that someone um, posed in the RSVP form was, um, was putting in all the work to get to where you're at worth it? Ten thousand percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, every moment that I spent before coming here, was like I was doing, I had to do school, but then outside of it, I had to all, I also did research and then I did, you know, volunteering and I also was in the clinic and I also shadowed and and now that is my nine to five life. Actually, it's more like nine to nine, but it's, you know, or maybe longer, but you know, but this is my life now every day. It's exactly what like makes me excited and makes me want to get up in the morning. So yeah, it was absolutely freaking worth it. I also agree that it was 100% worth it. Um, also being in the MS1 class, I'm surrounded by people who put in the same amount of work or, or more than me to be at the same place that I am. And we all share the same interest and same, same compassion. And once you get to the medical school, you'll, you'll realize that every, every second worth it. Yeah, I would say overall, definitely worth it. Like, uh, kind of what Nam said, um, just being surrounded by like really amazing people, um, people who like motivate you uh, to reach the best version of yourself, but are also just really awesome people outside of what they're doing. Um, and just like being able to like work on like saving lives day in and day out, even though they can be long days. Like I was just studying before this, I'm gonna be doing some more Anki cards after this. But, so it's a lot of work, but if you find a lot of meaning in your work, it makes it all worth it at the end of the day. So I'd say no regrets. I guess um, I'll let you guys know next week if I pass the spit stop exam or not, uh, if it was worth it or not. So, uh, <laughs> But all jokes aside, um, I think it was very worth it. Looking back at like the stress and the hard work, there were days, guys, I slept in the lab just to run a few examples. Uh, sorry, a few experiments and this and that. It was like tireless. There were some days where like you were very stressed. Like imagine like, for example, like Nick studying for the MCAT and going through his like classwork like, and then doing all this extracurricular. It's probably he didn't sleep some night. So. But at the end of the day, like, it's, it's very worth it. Um, and for me, it was worth it a lot because I got to stay next to my family. Um, I'm within reach, it's California, the GSOM. So looking back, I, I feel like um, I, I would savor every single moment of it, guys. Um, yeah, I'd also agree that it's worth it. Um... Like Candace mentioned in the chat, it, it was a lot of work, but um, I'm also seeing like the rewards of that hard work and it's cool to finally be um, a med student and get to learn all the things I wanted to learn and learn with people who are also equally excited about this um, as me. It's really inspiring to have peers that are so enthusiastic and excited about medicine and excited about helping people. So. Um, not only should you find your mentors, but you should try to find your people too, who continue to encourage you along your path. Um, and don't let anyone tell you, you can't do it. Um, seriously, I've heard some horror stories from, um, people who have been told by 
people at their school that they shouldn't be pre-med because they got a bad grade in this class or they don't have a perfect GPA or they don't have a perfect MCAT. Um, we're here to tell you that you don't need perfect anything because there's no right way to medical school. Um, and yeah, we're living examples of that. Um, many, many different routes to get to where uh, we are right now and um, you can totally do it. So um, hopefully this encouraged you guys. Um, all right, oh, do we wanna leave with any final words of advice or encouragement in the next couple of minutes? You guys can do it. Don't panic. I'm going to say this again from the beginning. It's going to be just fine. And whatever path you end up taking, that it, that's going to be the right path for you. So do not let all this like crazy like talk of like MCAT scores, GPA, extracurriculars, blah, 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 research papers, publications, like don't let that cloud why you're here which is that at the end of the day, we're all here because we wanna help people and that that's what we want to do with our life. And so that's why we're willing to put in this time to do this work. But if it doesn't work out the first time you do it or the second time you do it or the 15th time you do it, that's okay. Because if you meant to be there, you will get there. I guess your homework for tonight after our session is to find out if medicine is for you. So look up the pros and cons. If the answer is yes, just believe in yourself and never compare yourself to anyone else. And if I were you, I would avoid going on Reddit. I would avoid going on these like student doctor network. I didn't know what student doctor network was until I got accepted, to be honest. And someone told me, oh, they're posting like people who got accepted, their MCAS and all that. And when I looked at it, I'm like, so I looked at this in my two gap years, you know how much stress it would have brought me? It's just automatically because it's the human nature, you tend to compare yourself to someone else. So block all these venues away from your life. Try not to compare yourself to anyone else. You will have a different application than your friend, than your classmates, anyone else. And that's what matters. You wanna focus on how you make yourself. You need to focus on your strengths and work on the weaknesses. And that's what's gonna get you on, on success. There is no formula for getting into medical school. That's very important. Right, there's certain things that you need to do. You obviously get to get a decent grade and decent MCAT score. That's all, every student has to do that to get into med school. But other than that, there's, I don't think there is a set number of clubs that you need to join, set number of like research papers that you have to get. So like Fadi and Candace said, don't compare yourself to others. Just believe in yourself. You're, if you're interested in medicine, just believe in your compassion and um, do what interests you. Build your study habits and that's, that will make you unique. And that, that's what's gonna make you shine out on your application. Yeah, uh, one of my mentors had a really interesting like quote slash observation where they said a lot of pre-meds uh, have this trend where they pick out some of the best parts of other people's applications and in their mind combine it into one pre-med that they're competing against. So like, don't think you have to be a vet who is also a TA who did research and all that. Like those are three different people. So just focus on being the best version of you. And I would say, like you should be doing a lot of things that aren't medicine because being real, a lot of these pre-meds are gonna have research. They're gonna have clinical experience. So don't get me wrong. You wanna do something in that realm that's meaningful, that speaks to you, but that person interviewing you, yeah, they might remember your research, but they're also gonna remember, oh, you tap danced, that's awesome. Or, oh, tell me about when you studied history in Italy. Like these are the things that people remember. Um, so don't think everything has to be med day in, day out. Like you're able to do other things. So don't lose who you are in your pursuit for your career. I want to add something and follow up on what Nick said. That's very important, like your hobbies and uh, to like practice mindfulness outside of medical school. Here, I'll give you an example. So uh, one of the work and activities on my application, I actually chose to put my hobby on it and sacrifice a space that I could have wrote, 
about like some other activities. So I wrote about deadlifting, right? So I'm passionate about it. My, my classmates, you know, and uh, so I, I like I just worked so hard to get to where I am in that field, I guess. And believe it, I talked about deadlifting in four of my interviews. I didn't talk about it. The interviewers asked me about it. They're like, oh, like I see this. Explain to me what what did you do? Like, what was what did you eat? Well, how many times did you like practice? Like, what did what was your max and all that stuff? And I'm telling you, it's a great icebreaker. Like, interviewers will use stuff like that to like initiate a conversation with you. Because once you get that interview, it's all about you showing them your uh, personality, uh, uh, your uh, you, that you're a lively person, that you're not just a robot. Because they're going to be either your professors or someone you're going to work with. And they would want someone who they can vibe with, right? They don't want a machine. So have something along these lines to reserve one of your work and activities to describe a passion of yours outside of medicine, outside of like extracurriculars, just something unique to you that you like to do on your free time. It might be gaming too. It can, it can be anything, playing music, anything. I said this in the chat, but like kind of going off what Fadi said, I ended my like, tell me about yourself thing in the interview with my cooking hobby. And like, so cooking came up in almost all my interviews. And there was four interviews, I think, where I talked about cooking and basketball for at least 40% of the interview. So like, don't worry about like, oh, if I do this extracurricular thing, does it take away from medicine? No, if anything, it can add to it. Just to plug in for that. Absolutely. I was double major in college. I did Greco-Roman history. That had nothing to do with medicine, but it was the coolest thing I've ever done. And it now adds to like my medical knowledge because I know the history of a lot of these things that we talk about nowadays. And then on top of that, it did show up in my interviews. And fun plug about the MD-PhD program here, you can do your PhD in humanities. So like anthropology, stuff like that. And so if you do have interests that span like the entire you know, college major board, stick to that, you know, do what, do what makes you interested and happy and keeps you going. All right. Thank you guys so much for those great answers. I want to end just with a quote from Nick in the chat. Pre-med is not a personality trait and you don't want it to be, okay? Um, pre-meds get a bad rap for being, you know, competitive and very uh, intense. And I'm sure we have moments of that, but <laughs> that should not be your entire life. Um, you know, you want your doctor to be well, a well-rounded person and someone you can have a conversation with, not, not a pre-med robot who has everything perfect in their life. Um, that's boring. So <laughs> we're not robots. The takeaway <laughs> from this is that just be you and you'll be great. And um, with that, I wanna say thanks for attending. This recording will be posted on YouTube and uh, we'll have more sessions to come. So be sure to follow us on all social media sites and have a great rest of your week. See ya.